Hey guys, welcome to WrestleLine, and uh, really pleased to say on the line, um, after quite a while, I believe, I can't remember the last time we had you on, but none other than the New England um, Championship Wrestling promoter himself, Sheldon Goldberg. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good, John. How are you? Nice to hear from you. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, we said off air just, just a second ago as, as I got in touch with you that we are, of course, in very odd times at the moment um, with the whole pandemic going on uh, and things of that nature. How I've got to ask, how are things your end, uh, neck of the woods, where you are in, uh, in New England currently with, uh, with the whole uh, situation? Well, um, most of the stores are closed other than grocery stores and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what, what's happening here, we're, we're pretty much reaching uh, the peak of, of the infections and so forth. So, um, you know, there are a lot of um, restrictive measures in place. You know, uh, in my uh, non-wrestling life, I have to work from home. Um, but... Um, you know that's uh, that's the case for a lot of people, and uh, mm-hmm. you know we'll we'll get through it. There's not much we can do about it other than just wait it all out. So, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, in terms of wrestling and, and your promotion, has this had the? I'm I'm uh, assuming it's had a bit of an impact with obviously wrestling and going forward. How much um, how much plans has had to change here um, since all this has arrived on the scene? We, we haven't been terribly active in the last mm-hmm. couple of years. We, we've, we've run some shows. It's not like mm-hmm. we're totally inactive. But it hasn't really affected us that much because we're not running a regular schedule. Um, we're, we're trying to put some different things into play, and obviously the events that are happening right now is, um, you know, push that back a little bit. But um, uh, the wrestling business is changing. It, it's changing radically. It's changing all the time. Uh, this is going to force even greater change on a on a much wider level, and uh, you know there's no point getting upset about it. There's no point. Um, you just have to wait it all out and then uh, you know see what happens from there. There's no uh, you know there are no uh, easy answers. I should say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, fair enough. I think it's uh, fair to say as well. And um, obviously, last time I had you on, um, I remember you distinctly saying during the podcast we were talking about um something to do with the the whole how we perceive and the perception of wrestling today and uh mm. you pointed out that there was no better time um with the amount of wrestling that's been going on and i've got to say since probably i last spoke to you the uh the uk scene before this come along had right. really um started to thrive in terms of the amount of promotions that cropped up out of sort of nowhere. Um, and it mm. almost has, it, it's almost become what I would say is very close to the whole territory system that was in North America at one time um, in the way everything is set out. I mean, from our point of view, we, we literally got to the point where every weekend was coming. We were now deciding which show we would go to between the choice of four, which was quite unheard of in this country. Mm. Um, sort of mm. even just five years ago. So um, on, on our, our kind of thing, and I remember you saying it distinctly, and I, I couldn't quite see it at the time, but now everything has started to evolve. And I know that there was a lot of fear in the UK because once WWE had started NXT UK, um, right. a lot of promoters, um, a lot of media started to really speculate that that would be the end of this boom period. But actually it's had the opposite effect where okay, those guys have gone up to, to do in the NXT UK, but now there's been this uh, more of a rise and people filling in those old spots. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just really generated a lot, more, um, a lot more promotions. But I would say promotions that are run a very professional level uh, than what they ever was in the past. And uh, when I say that, I mean... Right. I'm right. I'm talking about going to a show once where they didn't even have a ring. It was a crash mat and two oh, no. guys <laughs> two guys Ooh. coming out who looked looked like I could take them in a fight if I wanted to. So yeah. that was that was a kind of nightmare scenario. You would you would show up at these events and it would be very random what you'd get. Um mm. 
So yeah, it, it's been it's been very much the opposite. And I know you've worked with some of the UK guys in your time as well. Um, right. I remember mentioning who were they again? Um, I could... Oh, Doug Williams. Oh, uh, right, yes, Johnny absolutely. Storm, Jody Fleisch, yeah. uh, to name three. Um, uh, I've always had a, a great respect for the UK and uh, the wrestlers coming out of there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, guys were well trained. Um, at least the ones that, that came our way, sure. um, you know, they were always well trained. They always, um, you know, brought something to our company that, uh, you know, was a different style and a different approach and, and that's refreshing and that's good for a locker room. Mm-hmm. You know, when you, when you bring guys in, you have a different set of experience and a different set of, uh, training, a different set of, uh, a different set of experiences. It, it only helps your locker room. Yeah. Yeah, and, so. and, uh, and, and you know, you mentioned Jody and Johnny. I recently done interviews with those two, and my God, they don't look any different. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Well, <laughs> Jody's really bulked up. I mean, he's really look, he looks tremendous. I mean, I, yeah. God, he looks in phenomenal. Not, not that he was not in shape before, but... No, but he, he's absolutely. like a... Yeah, you're right. He's like a freak of nature because he's just literally... He's still doing... I mean, everybody said he had a crazy work ethic anyway and the style yeah. he presented. And normally when young guys come along, you kind of say to those guys, maybe you want to slow it down, don't do too many high spots. But he's in, he's in a different realm um, right, to, to right. the rest of them because this guy shouldn't still be able to do the things he does. But, um, yeah, he's in incredible shape. And, uh, yeah, I, I see him in the circuit a lot. And, you know, he's busy as ever. And, of course, Johnny... Johnny's the same, um, very mm-hmm. much, so much enthusiasm and passion still for the business. Um, and I know Doug, Doug has made like a couple of comebacks, like he was doing, he was, he's doing some stuff in Japan last. Right. Um, and he's being very selective about what he does. He's basically sure. retired. Yeah. But, you know, Japan puts in a call and mm-hmm. he goes. So, yeah. Yeah. But you can't um, for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, those guys are kind of from that old um, sort of the FWA days that we had here for a while. Right. And they, they right. still kind of, you, you see a lot of them still on the circuit. And it's, it's incredible. But it, in a lot of ways, it sort of, um, I would say it sort of came from the FWA and, and it sort of spiraled mm-hmm. out like a, like a ripple right. effect, if you will, mm-hmm. um, in that way. But um, just talk us a little bit about what's been going on sort of independently, like in, in the U S like, especially in your sort of, um, in your sort of region, is that still going strong? Is it still very much like something that people were going out to and, and still wanting to see and have a first for? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of companies. There's a, a lot of little companies in new England in the six new England States. Sure. Uh, uh you know, it, it, it's uh, unfortunately what what happens in our area is you get the same people on every show, mm-hmm. uh, and there's a sameness to a lot of the smaller groups that I don't think is particularly healthy. Mm-hmm. I always tried to bring guys in from the outside. You know, my door was always open to people that wanted to work, and always open to people that, you know, were worth taking a chance on, whether they were you know foreign or domestic. Mm-hmm. And uh, I always try to do something a little bit different from everybody else. And uh, I stand by that strategy um, and uh, continue to, to look in that direction. Um, you know, I, I, a lot of what's happened in the States in terms of independent wrestling uh, in, in recent years is WWE is basically between d- WWE and AEW, they, they've signed all the, the top indie guys. Mm-hmm. All the guys that were making some noise and making, you know, a name for themselves got scooped up, and the whole, um, uh, what's the word that I'm? The whole flavor of the scene changed. Mm-hmm. Instead of a, a a guy looking to to cut his teeth with an independent company and prove himself as a, a as a draw, prove himself as a um, someone that uh, people wanted to go see and someone who was having good matches and so forth. Everybody's sort of looking past that now and saying, well, how do I get to the big guys? How do I get to WWE? How do I get to Ring of Honor? How do I get to Impact? How do I get to um, uh, AEW? You know, they're, they're not thinking about what do I have to do to be good on this level, good enough so that those guys 
you know, will, will take notice of me. And, and the world of social media has had a great change, has caused a great change in independent wrestling. A lot of guys and, and girls are essentially trying to be their own promoter. Uh, it, it, instead of um, yeah. instead of people working um, with others in feuds and trying to to build you know from show to show to try to prove that they're a draw, it, it it's very much a spot show mentality. Oh, I'll have a match over here. I'll have a match over there. I'll have a match down here. I'll travel to this state and have a show. I'll travel to another state and do a show. And and there's no. It, it's hard to. It, with the the better talent, it's hard to keep them in one place for long enough to really build something with them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not impossible. I mean, it, it can be done, but it's a lot harder because I think that, that the independent talent today see going from place to place as the way to do it as opposed to being associated with a particular company. Right. Um, so that that's a big change in, in independent wrestling. I mean, when I started in 2000, um, very different mentality, very different mm-hmm. mentality altogether. Um, we had our roster, we had our guys, we had you know our regulars, and then we had semi-regulars, be it the Doug Williams or um, you know Johnny Storm, Jody Fleisch. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a lot of guys and girls who would come in from Canada. Um, we've had people from all over the place, and and we always made room for. Um, talent from different areas, just uh, just to spice things up and and uh, make it a little bit different, give, give the fans something different to see. And uh, uh, you know it, it, what you find now is that companies really don't have they they have some set roster, but it, it, it's more I'll wrestle here, I'll wrestle there, I'll wrestle everywhere. It's not like I'm I'm wrestling for X Y Z promotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it, I mean, I think I, I kind of get that, and in a lot of ways, um, I mean, it's very much that you know you mentioned about WWE and, and AEW. They've almost, I mean, especially in WWE, I would say they almost stockpiled um, a pool of talent just to sort of have them under their umbrella, so that they they didn't go anywhere else. And right. I'm not really sure they always had intentions creatively. I mean, you just can't. It just it just wouldn't just work. Many yeah, there's too many people. So um, they were kind of almost stockpiling a lot of that, right. um, I mm-hmm. believe. And they kind of done it here for a while as well. Like I certainly felt at the beginning, they didn't really know and have a place to where the direction, but they certainly wanted mm-hmm. to make sure they were there. And then it was kind of, there was a kind of block brought into play where they, you know, other independent companies could still use the talent, but they had to use the, the correct characters whether they were babyface or heel, and then that got shut down because then some guys Mm -hmm. were getting injured, and obviously they wanted their their roster when they were doing their taping. So, um, yeah, it's got got to the point where I think that they, I mean, now, obviously, just very recently, we've we've seen quite a lot of releases, and we've seen Mm. sort of down the the negative side to stockpiling such a huge amount of people because clearly... The, re- the realistic outcome now is that they can't, you know, have all these people. But now we're seeing so many people just being released. Um, and unfortunately, but, it, it, we're in a situation now where there's no independent wrestling for some of those people to go to. Right. It's the worst time ever, isn't it? I mean, right. you just... It's the worst time ever. And, you know, um, they, they have this uh, thing in the U.S., I'm sure it's over there, social distancing. Yeah. They want people to be six feet away from each other. Mm-hmm. Well, who knows when spectator events are going to get back to, you know, some semblance of normal. Mm-hmm. If you have to seat people six feet apart from each other, you know, your, your venue that held 300 people now holds 75. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that makes it financially difficult for a small company mm-hmm. to function. So, yeah. so our end of the business, the independent end of the business it, is going to suffer for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to suffer for quite a while. You're going to see people uh, running shows to next to nobody. You're going to see people running shows for the sake of running shows and, and unable to financially compete because they just can't. There's just not enough capacity to do that. Mm. Yeah, so it's a tough one. What, what do you think your, your outcome will be to begin? Like when this phase is down, 
is is there an instant kind of thing to want to get back in there or do you think that you're kind of sort of be a little bit more cautious and wade it out a little bit because I 